Jimmy Fox was the second major leaguer in baseball history to hit 500 home runs after Babe Ruth. His 58 home runs in 1932 were the third most all-time in a single season at the time, behind the Bambino once more, who held the top two spots with 59 homers in 1921 and 60 hit in 1927. And this is just a sampling of the great accomplishments that made the Beast, as he was nicknamed, one of the greatest hitters in baseball history. Today, we're shedding some light on his post-career, one that took him to Northeast Ohio in the early 1960s, where at one time he worked at the May Company department store in downtown Cleveland selling sporting goods. We'll share with you the story and events that led up to that time, as well as show you some great memorabilia. So keep it right here on History and Relics. James Jimmy Emery Fox, nicknamed Double X and The Beast, was born October 22, 1907, and later played in Major League Baseball for 20 seasons. He started his professional career with the Philadelphia Athletics in 1925, followed by the Boston Red Sox in 1936, Chicago Cubs in 1942, and finished out with the Philadelphia Phillies in 1945. His accomplishments were outstanding, having been a nine-time All-Star 1933 through 1941, a two-time World Series champ, 1929 and 1930, a four-time American League home run hitter, 1932, 33, 35, and 39. Additionally, Fox is a three-time American League Most Valuable Player Award winner, 1932, 1933, and 1938. Fox also became the second player in Major League history on September 24, 1940, to hit 500 home runs. Two of those homers came from Cleveland's own Bob Feller in two separate games in June of 1938, while 11 others spawned by pitches thrown by Mel Harder between 1930 and 1940. Fox came in behind none other than Babe Ruth who hit his 500th home run 11 years earlier in 1929 at the age of 34. Fox was 32 years, 336 days old at the time of his 500th, making him the youngest player to ever hit 500 home runs, a record which would stand some 68 years until broken by Alex Rodriguez in 2007 at the age of 32 years and 8 days. Fox would end his career in 1945, with 534 home runs, which would leave him well behind Ruth 714, but first amongst right-handed hitters. He would remain behind Ruth until 1966, when Willie Mays topped Fox for second place on the all-time list. Fox was inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1951, with 179 out of 226 ballots casted, or 79.2%. The Sporting News noted that at the time, Fox had received votes in every election year since the Hall of Fame was first established in 1936. By the beginning of 1958, Fox had fallen ill, and his finances began to falter, as he was also out of work. Knowledge of his economic plight soon became public. At one point, Fox's stepson, John, was the sole provider for the family, working as a ticket agent for Eastern Airlines, earning $60 a week. The family was renting the house they were living in at the time, but had fallen behind in their rent by several months. However, the homeowner gracefully allowed Fox and his family to continue residing there. It was also revealed that Fox was not eligible for the player's pension plan as his Major League Baseball career had ended just one year before the plan was officially put into place in 1946. 
However, it was later learned from the Secretary of the Association of Professional Ballplayers of America that Fox was eligible for financial aid from that organization as he was a dues-paying member during his playing years. But Fox never petitioned for assistance from the APBPA and may not have known of that option. It had also been reported that Fox likely earned over a quarter of a million dollars during his major league days, but was unable to manage his resources, as he was known to be good-natured with his money, but also entered into some bad investments along the way, including a golf course venture from 1939 to 1941 that lost more than $40,000. When friends, former teammates, sports writers, and the public heard of this news, they all rallied to Fox's support, sending him money. Joe Cronin, general manager of the Boston Red Sox, stepped up even further and with the approval of owner Tom Yockey, offered Fox a position with their AAA farm club, the Minneapolis Millers. Fox accepted and later led the team to the playoffs and the Little World Series championship, which they won against the favorite international league champion, the Montreal Royals, sweeping them four games to nothing. The 1958 season with the Minneapolis Millers was Fox's last job in baseball. During that season, he was hospitalized twice with high blood pressure and other ailments. Expecting to return to the Millers for 1959, Fox was instead released by the Boston Red Sox at the end of the 1958 season. On August 26, 1959, Fox opened a restaurant at 232 East Simmons Street, Galesburg, Illinois. The opening was delayed by some three months as Fox suffered a heart attack just days before the original opening date, pushing the grand opening to the August date. The eatery featured charcoal hearth steaks and a dollar and ten cent lunch buffet. The walls displayed Fox's uniforms, trophies, and bats used by Al Simmons, Babe Ruth, and Lou Gehrig. However, the restaurant was short-lived, closing within a year. Out of work once more, Fox was contacted by former Braves catcher Mickey O'Neill and offered a job working at a company he owned or operated specializing in plants and shrubs located near or in Rocky River, Ohio. The Fox family located a home to rent in the Cleveland suburb of Lakewood. As he was preparing to move, Fox fell down a flight of stairs, fracturing his skull, getting a concussion, and injuring his spine. Shortly after his release from the hospital, Fox was permitted to accompany his family to Lakewood, where he spent six to eight weeks recuperating. O'Neill assisted in supporting the family until Fox was able to start work at the nursery. Once he was able to do so, it became evident that Fox was not able to carry out his duties due to the physical labor that that job required, forcing him to seek other employment options. In approximately 1960, Jimmy Fox was provided a position as a deputy clerk in Cleveland's Municipal Court, offered to him through the assistance of friend Francis O. Gallagher, a local umpire and the nephew of Miss Helen J. Lyons, clerk of Cleveland's Municipal Court. Gallagher made a recommendation to hire Fox to his aunt, to which she obliged. The position paid an annual salary of $5,200 a year. However, the offer was soon revoked as civil service officials declared Fox unqualified for the position. Fox then landed a spot at the Ohio State Unemployment Office, which afforded him a salary of $4,000 a year. Fox worked at the unemployment office throughout 1961. Fox's service to baseball while in Cleveland included serving as a hitting coach for the LaRitchie Ford team in the Lakewood Inner City League in the spring of 1961. As Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle pursued Babe Ruth's single-season home run record of 60 in early September 1961, the Cleveland Press published an interview with Fox where he had commented that there wasn't any stress on beating the Babe, probably because his mark was set just five years earlier and he was still playing. I was more concerned with winning the batting title than breaking the record. By November 1961, Fox's finances had hit rock bottom forcing him to retain bankruptcy attorney John V. Donnelly, who filed the voluntary petition on behalf of Fox. His stated salary for 1959 and 1960 averaged $3,400 a year, 
while his debts were listed at $4,260. Shortly after filing for bankruptcy and by early 1962, the unemployment office had released him from his position due again to the civil service officials claiming a lack of required qualifications. Fox later lamented his spending habits and noted that he'd never made a salary of more than $27,000 a year being an active baseball player. Now that's still better than the average worker at the time, but nowhere near what he could have made if he was active just a few years longer. For example, Joe DiMaggio became the first player ever to earn an annual salary of $100,000 in 1949. DiMaggio was later quoted as telling Fox, Jimmy, you were born 25 years too soon. In January 1962, Fox began his financial recovery by getting hired by the May Company department store on Public Square in downtown Cleveland. There, he held a sales position in the sporting goods department. Now here is an Associated Press wire photo of Fox dated to January 1962 that shows Fox at the May Company with his salesman smile as he's surrounded by merchandise. And just what is that merchandise you might ask? Well, Fox is encircled with Roger Maris signature model Spalding baseball gloves that were produced then in commemoration of Maris setting the new Major League Baseball single season home run record of 61 on October 1st, 1961. Roger Maris held that record for 61 years until another Yankee phenom, Aaron Judge, tied Maris's record on September 28th and surpassed it by hitting number 62 on October 4th of 2022, becoming the new single season home run record holder. Now if you look closely at the Roger Maris glove that Jimmy Fox is sporting on his left hand, it's a signature model 42-135. And we just so happen to have that very model glove to show you right here. Take a look. The Lakewood area of Ohio served the Fox family well. Jimmy Fox Jr. II was a sophomore at Lakewood High School in 1962. Before graduating in 1964, Fox Jr. II had been a three-time letterman for Lakewood's football team, where he was a quarterback. In his junior year, he also made captain of the team and took the team to a league championship. In his senior year, Jimmy Jr. II played baseball and batted 320 for the team earning him an offer and invitation by the Boston Red Sox to join their Florida Winter Instructional League. Both Jimmy Jr. II and his father decided on foregoing Boston's offer in favor of continuing on with his education as a first priority. While the elder Fox and his second wife Dorothy decided to move back to Florida in 1964, Jimmy Jr. II stayed in Ohio and proceeded on to Kent State University in the spring of 1965 on an athletic scholarship where he played collegiate football but never pursued a professional athletic career. Jimmy Jr. II earned a degree from KSU in 1969. On July 21, 1967, Jimmy Fox suddenly died while eating dinner at his brother's home. The next day, an autopsy confirmed that Fox had died from asphyxiation due to a bite of meat getting lodged in his throat. He had suffered the same fate as his second wife Dorothy did just a little more than a year earlier. The National Baseball Hall of Fame provided Max Carey and Rube Malberg as pallbearers for Fox's funeral that was held on July 25, 1967. Flowers filled the Van Orstel Chapel in Miami, Florida, where the services were held and a eulogy delivered by Reverend Giles Kirkland pastor of the First Methodist Church of South Miami. On August 8, 2000, Jimmy Fox Field at Kaufman Park in Lakewood, Ohio was dedicated in Jimmy's honor. Cleveland Indians alumni Herb Score and Mel Harder took part in the dedication ceremony. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our program. If you like our content, we ask that you give us a thumbs up, a like, share with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell 
so you always know when our new content is published. And all of this costs nothing, but means a lot to us and keeps us growing. You may also leave us a tip if you choose. The address is provided here on your screen, and a link is provided in the description area below. So until next time, everyone, this one is history. Hey, and be sure to check out our eBay store under ID, History, and Relics. We're now featuring channel merchandise, starting with our new logo magnet. They're only $5.50, and net proceeds go towards supporting our channel.